Welcome to Women's Footy for NAB. My name's Bryony Dawson and I am joined today by Richmond superstar and 26 possessions yesterday, Mon Conti. Mon, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, huge win for the Tigers yesterday. Well done. Must be, must be nice to get another one on the board. It's always good to get a win, so we'll take it. And how was the plane ride home? Was that okay? But a little bit more positive? Yeah, I was in business class. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was a good plane flight, especially after a win. Yeah, great. <laughs> All right, follow us on our socials, Instagram and Twitter at Women's Footy AFL. Let's check out the round nine results now. The absolutely huge weekend of footy. The Saints got up over the Cats um, and Richmond held on against the Giants, which is absolutely fantastic there. Melbourne absolutely thumping the Dockers at Optus Stadium and the Bulldogs as well getting up over the Eagles. It was a good day of footy for them. Let's take a look at the ladder now. Melbourne and Adelaide making up the top two and finishing out the top six is the Brisbane Lions, Kangaroos, Fremantle and Collingwood. If it stays this way heading into the finals, this is what it would look like. The Lions against Collingwood and the winner of that would take on on Adelaide and then North will play the Dockers to take on Melbourne in the prelim. Mon, how are you feeling? If you were in this uh, in this lineup, would you want to keep playing all the weeks of the finals or would you take on that, that rest week? Personally, I'd keep playing all the weeks of finals. I think if you've got a bit of mo momentum, you really just want to keep playing some footy. You don't want to take a break or take your foot off the pedal. I feel like, though, you might enjoy a little bit of a break, seeing as uh, the AFL teams are playing a game probably every three minutes at the moment. You don't think you just want that one week off just to, like, have a breath, let the body relax a little bit? Nah, the season's nearly over. The, um, I think it's always good to just play some footy, get yeah. over and done with and get into finals and just keep playing your good footy. Excellent. All right, well, let's get stuck into our news headlines for Nilex experts in watering. Well, the Ds, the record-breaking Ds, absolutely thumped the Dockers yesterday. It was so good to see such great footy being played. Yeah, as you can see, the Ds love playing good team footy. Um, they love getting goals on the board as well, and they just get around each other, and they're playing awesome footy at the moment and really making their stamp on the competition, which is um, awesome to see. And breaking that 100-point barrier as well in the process. Uh, Taylor Harris also broke the record for most goals in a season, overtaking Darcy Vesio's previous record of 16. Yeah, Tay's having an amazing season. She's playing really consistently. She looks like she's just enjoying her footy and really silencing those critics as well, which is pretty awesome to see. And, yeah, she's got a whole good team around her, a really good midfield group to get the ball down to her too, so she's playing some awesome footy. Yeah, great. Well, let's see that record being broken now by Taylor Harris. At the same time, this is the result of having your defence decimated and Harris will go up again and take another contested grab and can go back and become the first team in AFLW history to kick the ton. She's the best in the competition at that, isn't she? Number one contested marker in the league. Nine marks here tonight. Coming up for disposal number 13, and she's already kicked 2-2. Two -two. She's going back for a third. It's taken six seasons of AFLW, but a team finally cracks the magical century, and it's Melbourne. And she must have been pretty happy with that, you know, trying to crack the 100 uh, with 15 metres out directly in front. You wouldn't want to be uh, much further out than that, would you? Of course not. I don't think they realise that they uh, just broke the record there, but no, nah, you've got to make sure you hit those ones. Yeah, absolutely. So the game was being played at such a high standard as well, which shows just how far the AFLW has come. And it was great to see it being played on such a big ground as well. I know Melbourne has had to be out at, at Casey Fields, their home home field, uh, where the wind is just... It's, it's a record breaker in itself, I think, the wind out there at Casey Fields. So it must be nice for them just to play on the big ground um, in great conditions. I think that's the future for AFLW is to play on those big grounds, maybe at MCG one day, but Opta Stadium, absolutely amazing stadium. And I think... Um, to see more games, more FLW games played on those type of fields is going to, you know, get the score higher as well and there's going to be some good footy played on them. Yeah, and we know Fremantle had uh, a lot of outs due to health and safety protocols. It was a tough night at the office for them, but... Uh in a good, in a good uh, round for their debutante, Maggie McLaughlin, she kicked a goal late in the uh, game to provide a little moment of joy for the Dockers. Let's take a look at it here. Well 
So the Dockers just really getting on here. Great passage of play. Great solid mark there. As a first year player, you always love to kick your first goal as well. So it's a pretty special opportunity, especially having a bit of a flat team, not even at half strength, but to get your debutante to kick their first goal is pretty special. And what do you reckon the vibe must have been for the Dockers walking out on the field? You've got three of your best players out. How are you feeling walking out of there, seeing as your team is a little bit made up of like a friend of a friend of a friend, you know? <laughs> Yeah, it would be tough. I know um, when you're walking out a bit, like not even at half strength, knowing that your team is actually a really strong team, it's quite challenging. But I guess you go out there and you really just want to play for each other and do the best you can as a group. That's all you can really ask for, as long as you put that effort in. And coming up against a team like Melbourne is really tough. But yeah, at least they fought as best they could, but didn't get the result, unfortunately. But that's what happens sometimes yeah. in footy. All right, and the Saints have made it two in a row. How fantastic for them after the heartbreak of the GWS uh, loss where the goal was after the siren. The Saints have really bounced back now with two consecutive wins over the Gold Coast and Geelong. And the Saints, they actually looked really impressive yesterday. Yeah, as you can see on screen, like their pressure is, is really good. They're just not letting Geelong and their runners like Amy and um, all those type of players get out and run with it. They're just pressure, pressure, pressure and not letting Geelong get easy goals, which is obviously, um, yeah, one of the highlights of their game, or especially this game. And I feel like they've done that consistently throughout the season, the Saints. You know, they've just missed out on, a, on a, a win in a couple of games before these two wins. And you just feel like they've got a really good, young, strong side. Exactly right. The Saints' future is um, really bright. They have a really young list. Um, as you can see, the average age is only 24.7. So they got like 12 girls with the 18 to 22 range. So that's a really young side. And I think their future is so bright. And personally, um, coming from a young team as well, like you just know that it's going to be a long journey ahead. But as long as those players stick to task and they keep doing what they're doing, they're going to get some wins um, in the next few seasons for sure. And it would have been an emotional day uh, for the Saints yesterday as well, hearing the loss of, of Shane Warne. And it must have felt really nice for them to get the win. We know Shane was a, a massive Saints fan, but also um, we saw the opening of the Danny Frawley stand as well, which I think was fantastic and certainly a huge occasion for the club. Yeah, you're right. Obviously, Shane Warne, a, a big fan of the Saints. And um, what a legend, a cricket legend, which is a very sad moment, but obviously a special win for the Saints as well. And the Danny Frawley... Um, opening of their centre there. It's um, it's pretty special. I know the Frawleys quite personally as well. I played with Keeley Basel for a few years, so I know for their family that it would have been a really emotional day as well. So, yeah, it's very special for them. Yeah, a great day. OK, and Geelong, yeah, they did cost themselves a little bit there. Uh, some pretty bad misses. I know we've talked about a lot on this show that, you know, in the sixth season here, it is time for, you know, the players to step up and start kicking these goals. We see Chloe Shear miss that. A little, little toe poke there would have got it in. What are your thoughts on that, Mon? Well, look, I think we've all been in a team that, you know, if you just kick the goals, you win. So they've just been they were just so close. Obviously, the win was a huge factor there and they just missed a couple of easy ones, which really cost them. So hopefully they can do some goal-kicking practice at training and... Yeah, get back on the board because ultimately kicking goals wins your games, doesn't it? So yeah, they've got to get back doing that. Uh, and we saw career best performances as well from Geelong's Nina Morrison and St Kilda's Tilly Lucas right in the game. How good was it to see these two tear it up in that game? Look, they're two really good midfielders of the competition and they've got um, definitely a few more years left in them to really make their mark. And Nina's coming off an injury and she's, you know, dominating. So I can't wait to see what she can do in the next couple of years when she gets more confident and in through the midfield a lot more. And obviously Tilly, look at that, 22 disposals and 10 tackles. She was just a bull in there. And I think it's really good to see her going through the midfield instead of just off the half back. Um, she played on me um, a little bit in round one and when she was on me, you could tell she was on me. Like, she was just a bit annoying. So, I guess that's what you've got to do sometimes as well. So, she you, was awesome. You had a pretty big game in round one, though. So, I think, I think uh, you did all right there, yeah. mate. Team win, team win. <laughs> OK, well, the dogs destroy the Eagles in Perth as well. It was a rough day out in Perth for the home sides, wasn't it? Yeah, for sure. Um, it's good to see the dogs getting some wins. I think they're, they're due for a good season, so... 
yeah, it's really good to make uh, to for them to get up on the scoreboard and kick a few goals and yeah, just get the win away. Because I feel like the dogs, the dogs can be really good. You know, they beat Adelaide um, despite losing to Collingwood last week. The, the dogs really can compete with anyone, can't they? They do. They've got a really solid midfield. They've got Lammy and um, Black is in there, and they're just an awesome unit. Um, and yeah, they've just quite consistent across their whole board and. Um, yeah, they got a great team and I think they just got to compete from start to finish and they'll definitely get some wins. And it was great to see Deanna Berry out there as well. She played her second game after returning from an ACL injury. And she kicks this absolutely ripper goal and they really, she was very excited about it. Everybody got around her. How important do you think it is for players who are returning from such big injuries like an ACL to have good games like this? Yeah, Dee loves a good celebration. I remember that playing with her. Um, I think it's just really special coming off an ACL and having your first game back and um, kicking a goal is pretty awesome. But you could see that her teammates were just so happy for her and got around her. And I think it's, yeah, it's obviously challenging going in with a mindset, like, am I going to injure myself again? Am I wearing the same boots as I was wearing when I injured myself? And well, I know that all those things go through a player's mind. So it's really good to go out there and, and have a good game, get a win and kick a goal. So it's pretty good for Dee. And uh, literally adding insult to injury here, um, the loss of, of, of um, Dana Hooker as well from West Coast. She really uh, went down here in this pack and it sort of ended up on the bottom there. Um, and she really came off second best. She did. Look, that's the reason why I don't go up for marks in packs. Um, you always end up at the bottom, especially when you're not as big as the other girls. But really sad to see her go down. You really hope that she's fine and she um, comes back for next season because she's a really huge a huge player for the, for the Eagles. And something you might be uh, interested in to talk about now is the Tigers hold off a fast yeah. finishing Giants. You guys really, you guys started really well. Five goals to none in that first quarter. I think that's what really set you up for the game. Yeah, we had a really good start and that's something that we've been working on for the past two seasons is starting off strong. Um, as you can see, Court Wakefield got um, the, her first early goal there in the game and she really set the tone for us and, yeah, I don't know, we just loved it. We loved um, going out there and just playing some good footy, kind of responding to the week before um, and getting the win. But, yeah, start off really strong, which was really good, good yeah. feeling out there. Yeah, and it, d it definitely set you up well. But yeah. I've got to talk about Cora Staunton for a moment because she is <laughs> absolutely fantastic. Walked away with uh, three goals. I know we talked she's 40, yes, but she is an absolute... Uh, giant in this game because she just actually was named in the top 100 Irish athletes of all time. Like, what a phenomenal player. What a great footy brain. She's an absolute weapon. Well, yeah, as you can see, there's a reason that she was named in that top 100. She's age of 40 and still almost winning games for them, which is really exciting to see. I remember that happening and I was just kicking myself. I was like, can you not keep kicking goals? Damn it. <laughs> One more and then, uh, anyway. Um, no, nah, she played an awesome game and every time I come against her, she's almost like won the game for them. So she's definitely a weapon and I don't think she's slowing down anytime soon. I really don't Could think she is slowing down anytime uh, soon. She picked up the game at 38 and she's just... She's one of the best in the competition. You absolutely love to watch her. She's so exciting, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, she's just getting started. <laughs> and Courtney Wakefield was a great for Richmond as well in her first game since round two. She kicked a goal. Um, and great to have a little bit of balance now upside, um, up in the forward line for you guys alongside Katie Brennan. Yeah, Katie's um, had a bit of the load on her shoulders, um, being our like main um, tall forward. But to have Court down there clunking marks and kicking goals and providing the pressure that she does for our team is amazing. And um, yeah, she's, she's just an amazing person as well. She's got a family at home. She's from Top, top Hut and coming in every single week, just um, you know, committing to the team as she does. And, just so exciting and it's so good coming out of the midfield and kicking it down and seeing Court there because you know she's going to do something with it. She's going to kick a goal. She's going to do something awesome. And Katie Brennan as well. She was absolutely fantastic for you guys. Uh, two goals. She now sits fourth all-time in AFL goals behind only Darcy Bessio, Aaron Phillips and Taylor Harris. She's just great, isn't she? She's so consistent and just a, an elite player. Yeah, she's definitely elite to say the very least. She's one of the, oh, she's the best captain I've ever been, um, you know, played under. Um, she is extremely elite. She's been consistent. I think she's kicked a goal or two in nearly every game for the past however games, which is pretty awesome on its own. And in my opinion, she's the best forward in the competition. Um, she's amazing to play with and 
yeah, she's just an amazing player and I, I know she's going to be an All-Australian this year and if she's not, I have something to say. <laughs> you're coming back on the show and you're like, where's me mate Katie? Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, that was the news headlines. Thanks to Nihilex. Recycled water hoses, water like a Nile expert, available at Bunnings. Well, coming up, St Kilda's Tilly Lucas Rod after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to Women's Footy for NAB, who are giving away $10,000 to a local footy club. Simply scan the QR code on screen or visit nab.com.au slash footy is back to enter. Let's welcome now Tilly Lucas Rod via Zoom. St Kilda player Tilly, thank you so much for joining us. Morning, guys. Good to be here, I guess, virtually. <laughs> It must, uh, two, in the, two in a row now, it must feel absolutely fantastic. There's a couple of hard-fought wins in there that you guys have really scrapped for. Yeah, I think it's obviously the first time in club history we've had back-to-back -back wins. Um, it's a huge relief, I think, amongst the group. Uh, in previous games, we kind of got close and took it down to the wire and didn't get over the line. So I think we, know, we knew we were capable of winning games and it was just about, I guess, putting performances together. So a huge relief to get two in a row. Congrats on the win, Till. Um, it came out during the week that the GWS game was timed wrong. Um, it could have been three in a row. So how does that sit with you guys? Thanks, Mon. Um, yeah, it was an interesting week. We kind of, I guess, left, Simon left lane addressed it at the start of the week in a team meeting. He'd had a chat to the AFL, I guess, about, yeah, the time on situation and then the free kick. Um, so we kind of dealt with it early on and um, then kind of put that to bed. We did use it like, you know, to add fuel to the fire because um, we kind of felt that we'd been hard done by, but I guess you can't focus too much. Sometimes that stuff happens in a game. So we kind of just tried to move on from it as quickly as we could and focus on the Geelong game. Yeah, because you said, Tilly, you know, you, you dealt with it, um, but it does just come down to human error, doesn't it? It's just, it's kind of like it's nobody's fault and everyone's trying to do their best, but it's it's still got to sting, doesn't it? Well, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely um, frustrating, but as you said, human error, like how many times do, do players make mistakes in games that yeah. can make it go one way or the other? And I guess it's the same with the, the umpires. They're just doing their best. So it was frustrating, but that's footy, I guess. Yeah, a very diplomatic response, very well played. <laughs> and Tilly, how are you liking uh, being moved uh, to the midfield? You had 22 disposals yesterday, 10 tackles. Just an absolutely ripper game. Yeah, um, I'm loving it. I think I said yesterday um, on Fox that I only got moved there just before season, so like four weeks before. Um, obviously, with Doc and T being out, we kind of were trying to, I guess, fill holes, and that was one option. So even in the first two rounds, I still kind of floated back in the first two games, uh, but now I guess I've cemented a spot in the midfield. Um, I'm enjoying it. We're pretty young in there. I've got some good friends in there. I love playing um, footy with them. So I guess it's just about learning and growing every week, and I've been lucky to put some okay performances together. Hey, Till, with some of um, yeah your bigger mids out, how have you found that step up and that role, especially your leadership type role? Um, yeah, how have you gone about that? And is it do you like playing that more of a leadership role and, and all that sort of stuff, or is it quite challenging with um, yeah the side the young side you've got? Yeah, I think in the last few years as a defender, I kind of took on that leadership role back there. Mm -hmm. So I guess for me, it was just about changing that to suit the midfield. Um, and as I was saying, I have I didn't play there a lot in preseason, so it was about learning quickly because I do take responsibility in there as you know one of the the leaders in the group and kind of directing people in there. Um, and I guess the girls sometimes look to me for that, so I really enjoy it. I think it's kind of that responsibility has almost added an element to my game, so I'm really enjoying that challenge um, playing there, but also leading the girls in there. Well, let's take a look at what your coach Nick Del Santo had to say about your game yesterday. Yeah, she was all right today. Not bad for a girl that's coming to the midfield for the first time in round one. Previously played clearly across the half back line as I get heckled from a couple of girls. Um, yeah, she was fantastic today. She's had a really consistent year and her growth and her knowledge of the midfield has improved week in, week out. So we've been really happy with Till's performances, clearly on field, but also the leader that she currently is and also what she can be for our footy club going forward. Are you happy with that assessment from your coach, mate? Uh, not bad. Not bad. 
Um, yeah, Dal is, he's always cool, calm and collected, I would say. Um, that was kind of an expected response. I hadn't seen that. Um, but yeah, he's great. And I'm happy for that assessment. He might not say it now. We've been roasting him um, the last couple of days about his shoe choices. So he might have something else to say. <laughs> Now, Teal, the pressure um, was really immense yesterday. Um, is that something that you guys have been really trying to work on? And is that something that Nick has put to you girls to try and build that pressure game? Yeah, for sure. He keeps it pretty simple pre-game. So each line, I guess, has a focus. And then as a team, he just asks for effort and execution. So execution of our structures and then just effort at the contest, um, at the ball, at the opposition players. So I think you'll see that in that pressure. Um, we try and be unsociable and unrelenting, um, get up in the faces of our opposition. And as well, your forwards like Greiser and, and Shearlaw as well, they, they're really giving that forward line great balance yesterday. Um, and they're just competing really well. Yeah, I think we're really fortunate to have like two super athletes and I guess footballers down there um, in those two. And then our smalls are really getting to work. Zenos is having an outstanding um, year at their feet. And I think, yeah, uh, sh sorry, I nearly said a nickname, which is inappropriate. <laughs> Sheila and <laughs> Sheila and G, they're just um, formidable. Um, you know, when we know if we put it in their vicinity, they'll compete and give us a contest. And that's, I guess, all you can ask for from your tour forwards. And because, you know, you lost those really uh, close games as well. And then you've won these couple of, uh, you know, good, scrappy, close games. Has that been like a focus is just to get that consistency and, and get that intensity towards the end of the game to be able to get you across the line? Yeah, one of our um, coaches, Patrick Hill, he's um, he's been doing kind of, we've, in our review, we've been watching the last couple of minutes. So we've been seeing in those close contests where we went wrong, where we can um, develop and change things at the come to coming towards the end of a close game. So I think we kind of put that to show yesterday when we, I guess, flooded back maybe a bit too early, but um, yeah, it's definitely been a focus to try and get those close games over the line. Now, Till, do you think that you guys have it in you to beat the Crows and finish off the season in perfect fashion? For sure, why not? Two in a row, make it three. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, we know we definitely know it's going to be a, a big challenge. I think when we played them last year, it was it was definitely that. I think it was like fifty four to four inside fifties. Um, not to focus too much on that, but um, we know it's a challenge. But I think with momentum and being back at home and things like that, hopefully we can get a big crowd um, down at RCA, and that can help us get over the line. Tilly, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, no, nah, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me and enjoy your Sunday. Thank you. You Actually, you don't go home empty-handed. All guests on Women's Footy take home a Samsonite luggage package. Where there's live sport, Samsonite is there too. For innovative travel and business solutions, visit samsonite.com.au. Blakeaway is a valued NAB customer. Like NAB, Blakeaway provides a wide range of ready-to-eat meals made by chefs that care. Available at blakeaway.com. And you're also going to get a Spinal Ease pillow. The best pillow in the world is at spinalease.com.au. And you're also going to get there a $50 McCafe gift card. Try the Aussie Angus Burger at Macca's today. What's great gifts there for you, Tilly, and thank you so much for joining us. Coming up next is your good mate, Mon Conti, is Richmond's Maddie Sh Shelburne. We'll see you then. <laughs> Welcome back to Women's Footy for NAB. We are here at the McCafe. Try a deluxe iced coffee at McCafe today. Nadia is going to hand me my now delicious. Thank you, Nadia. Welcome. She's here every week making delicious coffee. Mm. Well, I want to introduce you to Richmond Gun now. Maddie Shevlin joining us. How are you, Maddie? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Fantastic. Have you met my mate um, Mon Conti before? Mon. Yeah, nice I think she's you. our mate now. <laughs> A huge win yesterday and a great day for you personally as well. You had 17 disposals and a goal. How have you been enjoying, enjoying your time at Richmond? Yeah, look, yesterday was a great team performance. Um, to come home with the win after a travel day um, is massive. So we really looked at this week and, um, yeah, definitely loving the trade, love my new teammates. Um, yeah, and, yeah, enjoying footy at the moment, which is the main thing. And you did kick a goal. Now, I, I got a little bit of intel this morning. I'm not going to say who from, but when you kicked that goal, 
Did you say, get around me? <laughs> Is that where you just... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, I did. Get around me. Get around me. (laughs) Well, I think we we pride ourselves on our celebration of the little things. And um, if all of my team got around me, I was up and about. So um, I think every single one of them did. And if they didn't, they were on the bench. So um, we've got a pretty close knit group. So yeah, no, it was very, very good to see. And there was a bit of a, a bit of feeling and a bit of a emotion in the game as well. What sort of sparked that? We see this here. It's really sort of well, look at me getting some of the best we've seen there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think Mon's always in and around it. I probably run away a little bit more than I probably should, but I think. Any game of footy is pretty heated, especially this time of the year. I guess us and the Giants both have nothing to lose but a lot to prove. So um, we could go out there really hungry and aggressive at the footy and um, we weren't letting anyone get in our way. And um, we showed that and we turned up for our teammates and, yeah, really made a pack for ourselves. What, what happened in there? What, what were you getting in there for, little feisty one? Um, just a bit of camera time, really. <laughs> no. um, I think Millsy, um, she tackled Eva and then I think after the whistle threw her down a bit. You know, she's got a bit of aggro in her, which we love about her. So, honestly, I think, um, yeah, just after that, they, the GWS girls didn't like that, got into her. And then I was like, can you stop? She's only a kid. Like... <laughs> Um, and yeah, everyone just got into each other. But I guess at the end of the day, um, it just makes the win even sweeter when there's yeah. a bit of um, bit of biffo on in bit there. Bit of biffo, so, bit of rivalry. Yeah, I think Sarah Hoskin <laughs> came off with a black eye from that fight. I did um, see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it made it really good, nice and, and sweet. Maddie, how are you finding it playing uh, for Richmond now compared to Collingwood? Yeah, obviously playing footy at the highest level week in week out's what you want to do and. I probably wasn't doing that at Collingwood as much as I would have liked and to have an opportunity and do that at Richmond and now with 30 of your best mates is really exciting and hopefully I'm yeah getting or giving them the output that they wanted and um, I feel like I'm yeah growing in confidence through my footy and enjoy having a front row seat to Mon Conti in the midfield and <laughs> KB up forward and court um, so yeah it's really exciting. <laughs> Well, uh, Richmond is actually, you guys are our, uh, this week's IMAR Trade of the Year nominee goes to you and your list management as they signed uh, Poppy Kelly, Jess Hosking and you, Maddie, in the off-season and all of you were absolutely instrumental in the win over the Giants and what you've brought to the locker room along with um, Poppy and Jess, is, that's what com- uh, contributed to the side. Yeah, absolutely. I think Trent um, Mosby, our recruiting manager, does a whole heap of work behind the scenes and um, when we can bring a really connected group together and and that's what he's done. So, um, yeah, to the girls that have been there from the start, um, if we can contribute to the legacy that they've started and make our own in the same pattern, um, it's a pretty exciting place to be at Tigerland. And what do you like about these new recruits, Mon? I love everything about these new recruits. Um, like Chev said, like all, all of these girls have become our best mates and just to go out there every single week and um, play with heart and play alongside these girls is amazing. They're just yeah, a part of our family now and they just bring so much to the team. They bring their own um, little spark and you can see Chev's a back when she comes and kicks goals when she feels like it, which is really special as well. You got to get around her, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. She'll tell you that as well. Um, and obviously Jess and Pop provide um, great spark, great um, halfback by Jess and obviously Poppy in the ruck has given us another good look. So, yeah, it's really good. Well, that was the IMAR Insurance Trade of the Year nominee for Round 9. The Trade of the Year will win $2,500 thanks to IMAR. Get an online quote and instant cover anywhere, anytime. Visit imar.com.au. You can also contact IMAR by ringing 13IMAR. Well, Maddie, thanks so much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on here. Thanks for having me, and I'll see you tomorrow at Training Mind. Yeah, see you, Chef. (laughs) All right, as we head to the break, let's take a look at the AFLW Rising Star nominees from Round 8. Thanks to NAB, supporting footballers from NAB AFL Auskick to the big time.
once I turned 18 and they announced that there was going to be a competition of AFLW, I think that's when it really started to set in that I could have a career in footy. There was a 150 odd girls that had to get drafted that year into the 18, so I kind of sat back in my chair thinking that I might be around the 100 mark, whatever it is. There was a lot of girls with talent in front of me and, and that had thrived in the footy community before me. Then lucky enough was to get picked up by the dogs at pick nine, so it wasn't long after that top eight, which was pretty cool and something I'll cherish forever. It's just like you speechless, you're lost for words. It's something that you always dreamt of as a kid and never had that sight to play AFLW footy, but then it was there in that moment and I was ready to take it. I love just that physical aspect. I think some days it's a bit hard when I have to go to footy training, but I love being outdoors, I love learning new things, and there's always something different that I don't know yet. I think awareness is something that I've definitely had to grow in the field of civil construction. You're around heavy machinery, so I'm doing a Cert 3 in civil, working as an apprentice in civil construction. I definitely love being hands-on and moving around machinery, and working on the level crossing removals, making it a bit safer for the community out there and learning a lot on the way as well. So taking that onto the footy field just means that you know where your teammates are or the opposition is and you have your peripherals always on just to ensuring that you don't get tackled or you just you can help your teammates out. I'm assistant coach at the Penton Hill Footy Club of the senior men's team. It's something that I never thought I'd do but I absolutely love now and giving back to the community sport is something that fills my glass up because I'm able to help people that love footy as much as I do. So my grandpa, he was involved in the footy club that I coach at now and he supported me heavily. He came and supported me when I was playing Vic Metro. You wouldn't hear much on the ground but I could always hear his voice and walking off the ground and seeing him was pretty special and he actually wears my very first Vic Metro jumper now with him where he's in heaven so it's pretty special that he has that and I'll ever forever cherish the moments that I have with my grandpa. My nan continually tells me that um, grandpa would have been very proud of the person and, and the footballer that I am. In women's footy, I think goals um, are a lot harder to score, so when we do get them, we like to celebrate them as much as we can. And My biggest footy career highlight was that premiership in 2018. It was something that I never thought would happen. I never thought I'd even play AFLW, let alone win a premiership. So, yeah, when the siren went, we had won, it was pretty emotional. There was a lot in it. The feeling of being able to play footy, let alone um, winning a premiership, is yeah, something I'll cherish forever. So I've had a few setbacks um, in my short AFLW career. I've had a knee reco, an ankle reco and a shoulder reco. So the injury front hasn't been my friend. So when I did my knee, I remember it so vividly. I think sometimes I wish I could forget it just so I could move on from it. I definitely knew that I'd done it. I think people always say, you know, when you've done your knee and, and that popping sensation. And when it did happen, I was on the ground and the trainer ran out to me and I said, yep, I've done my knee. She's like, no, you haven't. I was like, no, I have. And I kind of looked up at the crowd and I was like, I'm in this for a long haul now. I know that this isn't going to be a short turnaround. Got pretty emotional and it's a long 12 month injury that you have to rehab. So there was highs and there was lows, but the lows definitely got to me a little bit. It's been quite hard and the little things like learning to straighten your leg again and getting that extension and jumping, walking, running, everything, you basically have to start from scratch. The dark days are hard, I think. Um, what helped me was letting my emotions out. I think a lot of people try and tend to keep the tears in and crying as much as I could in that five minutes or whatever it was and then refreshing myself be like, all right, I've got it out now. Let's move forward and focus on the next target. I'm just excited to run out there with the girls. I haven't put any expectation on myself to what I need to do in that game. I just want to get through one quarter and get through two and then hopefully finish the game with a smile on my face just because that's where I relish and I love being out on the footy field. I've done it my whole life so getting back there will mean a lot to me and um, yeah I just I can't wait to run out there with the girls. Welcome back to Women's Footy for NAB supporting footballers from NAB AFL Auskick to the big time. Mon how good was that package? She uh, just how important is footy in people's lives and then, you know, having to, hitting your professional career and then having all of those setbacks, the knee, the shot, like all of that kind of stuff. How important is it for players to, to get back on the field and what kind of impact those injuries have on people? Yeah, that was a great package. Um, got some goosebumps in there, but you're right. Coming um, off injuries, it's really tough. And as Dee spoke about, um, obviously really challenging for her. So, no, it's really good to see when they do come back from their injury and then they go out and play some footy again. And obviously it's a really special moment for them. But, yeah, it's a really tough journey. And I think at the end of the day we can't walk around them um, on our tippy toes and, and yeah. as if we're walking on eggshells. We have to actually, you know, 
appreciate that they're injured, appreciate that they're out and, and let them um, share their emotions and let, uh, let them let us know how they're feeling with it all so we can be there to support them. Yeah, and there would be a lot of support from the club as well in terms of getting people back on the field. We saw them clapping the first time she was running around, so it's yeah. great, great to have her back. Okay, well, Daisy Pierce is our snaffle AFL PA MVP of the week with five goals and 17 disposals yesterday. What an absolute legend. You can cast your vote at aflpa.com.au. How good was Daisy yesterday? Look, Daisy is amazing. I think um, there should be something named after her. She is, <laughs> she's awesome. Um, and, yeah, as you can see, like, she just kicks five goals and she's had a quiet-ish season. She always plays a role for their team, I think, and um, I think she just steps up when she really needs to step up and I think that's a, a true leader. Um, she doesn't need to be the hero every single game, but when she has the opportunity, she knows, you just know that she's going to take it and if you see here, she's got um, the ball in her hands here and you just know something good's going to happen every time she's around it. Got a great bounce there as well, didn't yeah, she? Yeah. And we talked this morning, that, that just what you spoke about there, Mon, She's, she's a, a legend of a player, yeah, she's incredible, but I think the, one of the most important thing about her is her leadership value yeah. to the team. Yeah, she's, she's an amazing leader and I think um, even if you don't know her, you know that she's an awesome leader and I think just to have her on your team, whether she's um, having an amazing game or she's you know in the half back when they're winning um, by however many points, you know that she's going to have an impact on you. And yeah, she's just a great leader and just um, one of the great pioneers for the game. Like yeah. she's awesome. She's got uh, twins as well. Like who would have thought she'd be back out <laughs> playing? I think she knew, but no, nah, she's just sort of awesome. Her leadership, um, the way she goes about her footy, the way she gets people uh, get gets around her teammates yeah. as well is pretty awesome. Yeah, so, yeah. she's an absolute hero, uh, superhero. Super so. That was our vote for the AFL PA MVP of the week, thanks to snaffle.com.au. So I want to touch a little bit on uh, mine during the week. Sarah Perkins, um, she got trolled online from a couple of uh, tweets that she posted. She obviously, she missed that um, shot after the, uh, sorry, during the St Kilda game. And, and she was feeling pretty bad. She sort of opened up to people and just gets trolled and people are talking about her weight and... You know, she'd sort of hit back and, and, and um, we saw, yeah, um, Steph Trotchy there got, you know, um, held her back and that kind of thing. And I just think, oh, how, like, when are we going to stop talking about women's bodies and, and, and how they look and, like, what they weigh and everything like that? Like, it's just, it's getting old. And what are your thoughts on, on how this week unfolded? Honestly, I think that trolling sucks. I think it's it's an ongoing thing and it needs to stop. Like, it's just a um, bit pointless if you ask me. But I think at the end of the day, like, Perco shouldn't have to deal with that. No female athlete or any athlete should have to deal with worrying about their body. At the end of the day, she can play footy and she's been playing some pretty good footy. I know when I played against her, every time the ball's near, she's going to do something with it. Yeah. Um, no matter what size anyone is, at the end of the day, if they can play footy, they can play footy. And I think that's all we really need to think about. And if you look at the trolls and the people commenting, who are they? It's either someone with a username 1745 or whatever, or it's just some random who probably sits at home behind his screen all the time so yeah, yeah. I think we just need a um yeah trolling sucks and I think we just need to focus on you know if they can play footy they can play footy no matter who you are what you look like yeah but I think what it also does with the trolling whether it's a fake account or, or whatever it does open up the discussion and allows people to talk about women's bodies in yeah. negative ways whether they're athletes or not and I just think it's just so ridiculous we just need to stop women do not owe you skinny they don't owe you pretty they don't owe you a smile and I think that we just need to stop and especially in sport just let them play. The, what we should have been talking about is she should have kicked the goal. Mm. She is an elite athlete and she should have kicked that goal, you know, however far out she was, almost directly in front. And that's what we should be critiquing, exactly. not the way that she looks. And that needs to change in footy and sport. Amen. <laughs> okay. So we're going to take a very short break now, but we will be back shortly.
Welcome back to Women's Footy for NAB. We're going to get stuck into the Pillar Products Analyzer now. Pillar Products Roller Blinds, exclusively at Bunnings. Uh, the Ds are a team playing with amazing chemistry at the moment, Mon. Yeah, as you can see there, they're giving up good for great. Um, they're giving the easy hand pass over to make sure they get a goal right in front. Um, Kate Hall could have kicked this goal, but then she finds days again. And they're heaps of points up, but they still make sure that they get around each other as well. As you can see here, after days kicks it, they'll get around her. Um, and yeah, they're just playing some really good unselfish footy, giving that extra pass. Paxi could have kicked this goal easily as she normally would, but she finds her teammate right in front for a, a nice set shot as well. So I think it's just really showing their unselfish play and a reason why they're definitely a premiership contender this season for sure. They certainly are. Well, that was the analyzer. Thanks to Pillar Products, who have you covered inside and out. Shutters, roller blinds, a window film exclusively at Bunnings. Well, let's have a look at the goal of the week for Underworks. Serious about sport. Look at how smart this is from Cora Thornton. We've talked about her already, but she is just elite. She's exciting, and I love watching her kick goals, Mon. Yeah, she's awesome. It's um, exciting watching her play, even if it's against your team, as you're seeing on screen now. Um, yeah, as soon as she gets it, she likes to roll and go, and she has that um, her her own kicking style, but you know it's going to go through most of the time she and knew, I think your teammates know. Yeah, knew there wasn't much time left. She's like, we're on here, just going to kick it. Yeah. All exactly right. right, well, Underworks knows Aussies are serious about sport. That's why they're rewarding grassroots clubs with a new pair of Underworks, Underworks sports socks for every single player. All right, well, we are going to have a look at the Sunday games just after the break. Stick with us. Welcome back to Women's Footy for NAB. We're going to have a quick look at the Sunday fixtures here. A massive game of footy to be played. Mon Conti, thanks for joining us today. And we'll catch you next week on Women's Footy.